Okay, hopefully we still have some people there. Hello? Uh, I don't see anybody in attendance here. Got a few people showing up here. Uh, hopefully most of you are going to be migrating over. Uh, I sincerely apologize. Uh, technical difficulties, something I haven't encountered with this before. Uh, done multiple sessions uh, with Cicerone, as a lot of you know, and have not had that happen. Uh, but uh, I am on and I see a lot of people have migrated over. Hopefully uh, we haven't uh, lost a ton of people. Uh, so, uh, I will say now, welcome. Uh, thank you for being patient in the first 15 minutes. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, so this is a session on beer clean glassware, uh, and welcome to the Cicero and YouTube channel. I appreciate, uh, your patience and hanging out. Uh, it is great to be here. My name is Neil Witte. I am Master Cicerone, and I'm the lead trainer for the Cicerone Certification Program. So uh, you may have heard that this Saturday, April 24th, is Beer Clean Glass Day. Uh, so this is a relatively new thing, but Saturday, it's coming up. Uh, so what we're doing for Beer Clean Glass Day is we're asking everyone to post pictures of their beer clean glassware on your social media uh, account. Use the channel of your choice. You want to do Instagram or Twitter or, or whatever you decide. We'll be uh, looking out for the hashtag beer clean glass. So post a picture with hashtag beer clean glass and tag Cicerone and you'll have a chance to win a beer clean glass prize pack. So uh, go ahead and, and do that on Saturday. We'll be looking for those submissions on Saturday and we'll be selecting a winner on Saturday. Um, so uh, in pre preparation for beer clean glass day, uh, I am doing this talk about beer clean glassware and we're gonna do a little Q and A afterwards. So we're gonna talk about what a beer clean glass is, uh, we're going to talk, talk about how to tell if you have a beer clean glass and how to get a beer clean glass. We're going to talk about this from both a professional standpoint, if you're working in a bar or a restaurant or a brewery tap room, but we're also going to be talking about this uh, from the home perspective. So how to get a beer clean glass at home, because you may not have all of the uh, amenities that uh, your average bar or restaurant has. So uh, we'll be talking about both of those things. So uh, it is uh, four o'clock here, central time zone. It may be five o'clock where you live. Uh, so it is time for uh, a beer. I want to know what everybody's drinking out there. First of all, I'm drinking something locally from Alma Mater Brewing Company. It's called Clinker. It is a uh, German pills. And I'm going to pour this into my glass and talk about what it means to be beer clean glass. So there we go. So let's take a look at this and this glass should be nice and clean. Woo. That's a beauty right there. So what does it mean to be a beer clean glass? We know that looks really nice. Right, that's a beautiful looking beer. <sighs> Boy, I need a drink after those technical difficulties. Fabulous beer. So what does it mean to be a beer clean glass? Um, first of all, a beer clean glass is 
free of soil, which is kind of the no brainer part of, of a clean glass, right? When you clean something, you get all the soil off of it, but it's also free of oil. So there are uh, sometimes somewhat invisible oils that can deposit on the inside of your glass and affect the appearance and also affect the aroma and flavor perception. So uh, this having a beer clean glass is an essential part of enjoying beer the way the brewer intended. There's lots of ways that beer can get screwed up from the time it leaves the brewery until it ends up in somebody's hands. And having clean glassware is, uh, is one of those important steps. So you could potentially be doing everything just right, storing the beer the right way, pouring it through a clean draft system, uh, have all the elements in place and literally screw it up at the very last possible moment by putting it in a dirty glass or a glass that's not beer clean. So a beer clean glass is not going to affect the aroma or the flavor perception or the presentation of the beer. In fact, it's going to enhance all of those things. So how do you know if you have a beer clean glass? So first of all, you'll notice that this glass right here has no bubbles stuck to the inside. There's, it's totally clear. So uh, the bubbles are not sticking to the glass. You know, that's one of those things. Uh, bubbles don't stick to glass. Bubbles stick to stuff on glass. So some type of oily or fatty residue on the inside of the glass is going to cause carbonation to break out and stick to the inside of the glass. And, and then you'll get those bubbles stuck to the inside of the glass. Uh, it, can, it forms a nice foam head. You saw that nice head on top. Uh, I've taken a drink since and just uh, the natural oils from my skin have a tendency to collapse that head. Um, and oftentimes a good beer clean glass will leave lacing as the beer is consumed. So you'll get a little line of foam residue for each drink. And oftentimes you can literally count the number of drinks that you take in the glass. So I have another glass here that I, uh, that I pulled off uh, deep from my cabinet here and I'm a little scared of what might happen here. Uh, but I thought I might, uh, pour another beer into this one and, and see what happens maybe give you an idea. So I'm pouring a, an old beer that was in the back of my fridge too. So, uh, So you can kind of see there's a lot of bubbles that are stuck to the inside of that glass there. And you can see the head, all those big fisheye bubbles are just collapsing. Uh, you know, that, that right there is a glass that is not beer clean. So I'm not gonna drink this beer, uh, but I wanted to demonstrate what could happen. So I am going to continue to drink this beer. Feel free to share whatever beer you're drinking in the, in the chat as well. Um, so really the three main things that you, uh, three main things you're looking for with a beer clean glass, you're looking for no bubbles stuck to the inside of the glass. You're looking for uh, a nice collar of foam on top and you're looking for lacing on the glass as you consume the beer. Um, so how do you get a beer clean glass? So first of all, we need to use the proper cleaner. Uh, use it, Oftentimes I see, I see this at bars and restaurants and I see it a lot in people's homes is they'll use detergents like Dawn or Joy or Palm Olive or whatever and these household uh, dish detergents that you use for washing dishes in the sink. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of those detergents are oil-based. They have lanolin in them. And lanolin and those oils can deposit on the inside of your glass and cause the bubbles to stick, cause a head to collapse, um, and generally affect the appearance and, thus the, and also the flavor as well. Um, so you want to use a glass cleaner that is not oil-based. 
Uh, so uh, there are a lot of them available. A lot, just about any draft equipment supplier is going to carry some type of uh, detergent for cleaning glassware. A lot of restaurant supply companies carry detergent for cleaning glassware. You want to make sure it's something that's oil free. Uh, so there's a lot of them available. Some of them are, uh, a lot of these formulations uh, are sold as a low foaming. It doesn't have to be low foaming, but they make some versions that are low foaming for uh, restaurants or bars that have those electric brush sets that spin in the sink. Um, so you want something that's not going to foam up too much. Um, so uh, using an oil-free detergent is really the first step in getting a beer clean glass. And then it's really just about the technique and, and the method that you're using to, uh, to clean the glass. So there's really, it comes down to a couple different methods, right? So uh, in a bar or restaurant, you've pretty much got uh, two different choices, an automatic dishwasher or cleaning by hand. So if you're working in a place that has an automatic dishwasher, um, you know, a lot of successful cleaning comes down to, uh, you know, a handful of things. Things like having, for, first of all, having a dedicated dish machine. Uh, having a dedicated dish machine is really critical to getting a beer clean glass. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to be sharing the same wash water with food dishes. Because obviously food dishes are going to have a lot of fats and oils, and those will deposit in the wash water and in the machine, and then you're depositing those on, on your glassware. So you don't want to be washing uh, restaurants and bars and brewery tap rooms, don't want to be washing glassware in the dish machine that they're cleaning food dishes in. So it has to be a dedicated machine, typically behind the bar. And then it's just a matter of getting the right mix of chemicals. So first of all, you need that oil-free detergent, uh, which is, you know, again, a really important part, that oil-free detergent getting the right dose per wash and getting the proper rinse aid because depending on the mineral content of your uh, local water supply and the water you've got coming into the machine, uh, you may or may not need some, uh, some assistance in rinsing. So rinse aid is oftentimes a good idea. And then uh, properly dosed sanitizer because at retail, uh, you need to be sanitizing glassware. And so uh, a lot of those things have to be dialed in very specifically uh, based on the temperature of the water you're using and the, and the mineral content in your local water. And the most successful places that I've seen that can manage all those elements with a dish machine uh, are the ones that are working very closely with the company that they lease that machine from or a chemical company to come in and get that right mix of chemicals and help them achieve beer clean glassware every time. Um, so, you know, it is, it's a, a lot of it is in the hands of the type of the machine and, and working with the right type of people. Um, <clears throat> so it is possible to use a dish machine successfully, uh, but a lot of those elements have to be in place. Now, when it comes to washing dishes in a dishwasher at home, this is a lot different proposition and it can be a lot harder to achieve that at home. So, uh, you know, basically you're, you're probably not going to be running your beer glassware through a whole dishwasher cycle by themselves. Um, and, you know, if you are, I mean, you know, maybe you're going to be a little bit more successful, uh, but most of the time you're washing it with dishes. So you're, you're going to have this, this issue of washing food dishes and beer glassware at the same time. And, you know, your results may vary at home, but dishwashers at home generally are not reliable for getting beer clean glassware every time. Um, so I've had mixed results over the years trying it and basically I don't do it in my dishwasher at home. I hand wash all my glasses. So uh, along those lines with hand washing, let's talk about the, the manual cleaning. Uh, and I'll start with how this is typically done at retail. Uh, so in a bar or restaurant or brewery tap room, uh, this is going to happen in a three or four well sink. Uh, so this multi-sink unit uh, is going to allow us to do all the proper steps in a row. So this give, using this method is going to give you the most control over 
getting that beer clean glassware every time. It'll give you more control than using the dish machine in my experience. So the way that procedure goes with this three or four well sink is you start by emptying the glass into an open drain. So if you have a four well sink, your first sink would be just a dump sink. Um, if it's a three well sink, you might be dumping in a different sink somewhere else or the standpipe that stands in the sink that allows you to fill the sink up to the level of that standpipe. You can get a standpipe that has a big bowl on top. And that bowl could serve as the dump. What you don't want to do is be dumping uh, extra beer into your wash water. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so empty your glass into an open drain, and then in your in a in your next sink is going to be your wash sink. So you're going to have hot water mixed with your oil-free detergent and a set of brushes. Uh, these stationary brushes or potentially the big machine that has the rotating brushes. Um, so you wash your glassware on the brush, getting all sides, inside and outside. If you have oddly shaped glassware, like a tall Hefeweizen glass, uh, you may need the assistance of a longer handled brush to wash that deep part of the glass manually. Um, or maybe your set of brushes has an extra brush that's a little taller. So you have to be careful about these kind of uh, deeper uh, pieces of glassware or anything with extra curves or whatever. Just make sure you're getting it thoroughly inside and out. And then once, you, once you're done washing it, you go to the next sink and you rinse in cold water. So the next sink is a cold water and you, you use what we call a, a heel in, heel out method. So that's essentially taking that glass and dunking it underwater, but turning it upright underwater so, so water fills into the inside um, and you're completely rinsing it. So you do the heel in, heel out in cold water, and then your third sink is sanitize. And in your sanitizer sink, uh, you've got hot water and, uh, and some type of sanitizer that is designed for beer glassware. So there's a lot of different sanitizers out there. Um, one of the, one of the best, or one of the most reliable ones is a trichloromelamine, uh, which is available in, under many different brands. Um, things that you should probably stay away from are ones that are going to leave an odor or some type of residual odor. And those would be a quat, like a quaternary sanitizer or hypochlorite or bleach. Those things are, are not good for sanitizing glassware because you're gonna smell those things in your beer. It's gonna make your beer smell and taste like that sanitizer. So a trichloromelamine or, uh, or potentially some other type of, uh, of sanitizer designed for cleaning glassware, you mix that with hot water in correct proportions, and then you use the, the heel in, heel out again in that method. And then a very important part of the, a very important step here is that you allow the glass to drip dry. So you air dry that glass by inverting it on a rack or some type of drain board that allows air to circulate underneath. Uh, what you don't want to do is set it upside down on a towel or just a flat surface that doesn't allow air to flow underneath. You need that airflow in order for it to dry. And as it dries, that sanitizer will evaporate. And so then you won't have that potential for the sanitizer aromas in your glass. So uh, at home, uh, you know, we I just do a shortened version of this, right? So I have uh, I have oil-free detergent that I use. Um, you know, I get it from a draft equipment supplier. Uh, that I work with with my own work, but you can order these things on Amazon or like Webstaurant or, you know, you can, there's all kinds of different brands out there of this oil-free detergent that you can just keep at home. So I keep a bottle of this at home and I'll mix some hot water, hot soapy water with it in my, in a clean sink, make sure I clean out the sink if it's had food dishes in it or whatever. And then uh, I wash with a soft bristle brush. So I have like a baby bottle brush. So this is what I clean all my glassware with. It's this old baby bottle brush and it's nice and soft on top. And I just use that hot soapy water and just scrub out the inside and scrub the outside. And then I rinse it in cold water. Um, I don't sanitize my glassware at home. 
the health department is not coming to my home and inspecting my glassware, thankfully. So, uh, you know, I don't sanitize my glassware at home and very few people do. Uh, so uh, if you're cleaning it well at home, you should be just fine. Um, but if you're in a bar or a restaurant and you're serving people, you have to sanitize. So, uh, so that's how I do it at home. And I invert it on, on a mat that has, that has ridges on it. So it allows it to drip dry. I allow them to air dry. And, and then, uh, I have beer clean glassware. So a couple of notes about that methodology, especially uh, at retail, at a bar or a restaurant, is uh, not only do you want to keep that wash water separate from food, you want to make sure you're keeping it separate from dairy as well. So uh, the, the example I'm thinking of is if you have that four well sink and you're tending bar and you've got a whole stack of dirty glassware and you're washing all your glassware and you've got uh, glassware that had uh, maybe uh, a white Russian, so it had cream in it, or maybe something that had Bailey's Irish cream or even ice cream. So you've got some type of glassware that has dairy in it. You don't wanna be washing that dairy glassware in, your wash, in the same wash water, because again, the fatty residues from the dairy are gonna get in your wash water and then you're going to deposit that on your beer glassware when you uh, when you go to wash your beer glassware uh, and you know and then you don't have a beer clean glass um, so make sure that you're keeping all of that separate if uh, ideally those go through a food dish machine in a kitchen but you know if you have to wash those in the sink wash those in the sink and then change out the water and give yourself new detergent and new rinse water so save those to the end and then change everything out so you have fresh detergent for your beer glassware. So those are, uh, those are some tips on how to get that beer clean glass. Next up is how do we test for the beer clean glass? As we talked about how to make sure that you have a beer clean glass, but that's after you've already poured the beer in it. This one here that I poured, it's too late. I already poured the beer. And now I know that my glass isn't clean, so I'm not going to drink the beer. How do you know that your glass is beer clean before you pour the beer in it? Because that's arguably a more valuable piece of information. So there's really two pretty reliable methods that you can use. One is, my favorite, is the water test. So what you do is you take your glass and you just simply rinse it in water. So if you have that four well sink, for example, just dunk it in the rinse, in the cold rinse sink and then hold it upside down and watch the water as it runs off the glass. And the water should run off evenly in a nice even sheet. That's what it's gonna do on a beer clean glass. If you have any type of oily or fatty residue on the glass, the water's gonna ripple around that spot or it'll bead up on there. And you'll have little water beads or little ripples or spots where the water really isn't running over. And if you have any of those areas, that's that type of oily or fatty residue. So that's kind of a good telltale sign. Just make sure that you get that nice even sheeting of water as it runs off the glass. Another method that you can use, it's a little bit more dramatic, uh, but it can be, you know, it can sure tell you if your cleaning regimen is effective, is the salt test. So the, the salt test is similar to the water test in that we're, we're wetting the water, you wet the inside of the glass, wetting the water, you wet the glass, and, and then when you have a wet glass, you take uh, table salt and you shake table salt on the inside of the glass. And it should coat evenly on the inside of the glass. If it coats, if it coats evenly on the inside of the glass, then that's a clean glass. If there's any spots where the salt doesn't stick, however, that's a sign of that oily or fatty residue again. So any spots where it's not sticking or indication that your glass isn't very clean. So the, the issue with the salt test, of course, is that even if your glass was clean, it's not anymore because you got salt all over it, so you have to wash it again. But 
if you're doing a, a bartender server lineup at a restaurant, or if you want to demonstrate to other employees at a bar or restaurant or brewery tap room, how effective the glass cleaning regimen is, this could be a really uh, effective way to show people. So now that you have your beer clean glass, you're stored it, uh, allowed it to air dry, you're ready to pour, you pull that glass off the shelf. There's really kind of one more thing we want to do uh, before we pour. And that is we want to give it a little water rinse. And uh, thankfully, in the past several years, this water rinse has become uh, quite common. A little, little rinser sit, sitting right in the tray, typically right there at, at the draft tower. Giving it a quick water rinse helps us out uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, it chills the glass slightly, which can be, you know, which could be uh, desirable. Uh, and, and I do want to make a little side tour about this with chilling the glass uh, because there is this whole issue and this has to do with beer clean glass too. There's this whole issue about frozen glassware. Um, so frozen glassware is something that is typically bad for beer. Uh, frozen, when you take the glass and you stick it in the freezer and you pull out that ice cold glass and you pour beer into it, one of the first things that happens is that glass just fills up with foam because all of those ice crystals inside uh, are what we call nucleation points. They're points that grab carbonation and allow it to start breaking out. And so you get this kind of uncontrollable foam in the glass. And then oftentimes you'll see the bartender kind of running the beer and tipping the foam out, trying to get the, the glass full of beer and it just doesn't work. But then when they finally do get it full of beer, it's probably flat because they've knocked all the carbonation out of it. Uh, so that's a that's a problem. Uh, the other problem is that ice cold glassware uh, is gonna be causing you to serve your beer too cold. You get a beer that's served at at 32, 33 degrees. It's just not warm enough for the beer to open up and release its full aroma and really kind of present itself to you properly. So it's just not, it's just too cold to be enjoyed. Um, and oftentimes it results in that kind of iceberg floating on the beer. Um, and what's even worse is if you take that glass out of a sanitizer sink and put it wet into the freezer and freeze the sanitizer on there, now you've got a sanitizer iceberg on your glass and your beer is going to taste and smell like whatever that sanitizer is. So frozen glassware is just generally a bad idea. Now back to the chilled glassware, that's okay. And so that slight chilling that you get from that fresh water rinse is, uh, is, is a nice thing to do. It's, it just slightly chills the glass, but I think one of the more important things about that is that water rinse is that it just simply wets the inside of the glass and prepares the glass for pouring. So it can remove any type of lint or anything that may have kind of floated into the glass, but really having that wet surface is gonna allow you to control the foam when you're pouring more effectively. Because when you're pouring beer from a draft system um, and when you're pouring beer from a bottle or a can for that matter, you wanna be able to create a collar of foam on top. You want a nice inch to two inch foam on top. And in order to get that, you have to have control over it. You have to start slowly down the side of the glass. Uh, and then as, the, as you're about half to two thirds full, you're standing the glass up and manufacturing that foam. But if you start off and you get foam right off the bat, now you've got foam and when foam is basically CO2 breaking out of the beer, and when you have CO2 actively breaking out of the beer, you can pour clear beer on top, but it just turns into more foam. So it, it now the creation of foam is out of your control. And so when you have a dry surface of a glass, there's more friction when the beer hits it. And that friction creates foam at the beginning. And so you're more likely to get that chain reaction of foam and more likely to get more foam than you want. 
if you have a wet surface of the glass, the beer flows nice and smooth down to the bottom. And, and then once you're about half to two thirds full, then you can control how much foam you create in the glass. And so then you can create that inch or two inch head, or if you have uh, a very effervescent beer, like a German Weiss beer or some Belgian style that's very highly carbonated, maybe even like more than two inches, you could have a you know, pretty large head on top if you want. So it gives you control when you have a nice wet surface. So that, uh, that cold water rinse is a really great thing to do right at the end. So that's, uh, that's the basics about beer clean glass. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, we have some questions here. I'm going to open it up and allow people to uh, ask some questions and let's see if we've got anything here. Uh, I've got one uh any recommendations on oil-free detergent to use? Uh, would PBW work? I can't speak for sure about PBW, uh, powdered brewery wash. So that's uh, that's not something that I would really recommend for detergent. Um, so I use something called TDC. Um, it's made by a company called National Chemical, but there's a bunch of other stuff out there as well. Um, and you know this, but that TDC works pretty well for me. You can get it just about anywhere, Amazon or uh, some type of uh, restaurant supply or something like that. Um, okay, let's see here. Other questions. Um, I don't know of one that's available in Ireland. I wish I did. <laughs> um, let's see here. And I haven't seen what other beers you guys are drinking, so feel free to share that. There we go. Um, the city I'm in has very hard water. Does this affect the cleaning process in any way? Um, you know, I have, we have very hard water where I live. I live in Kansas city, Missouri, and we have very, uh, hard water as well. Um, it does not affect my ability to clean glassware in my home. Um, and typically the hardness of the water, uh, is, is less of a factor when you're manually cleaning. Uh, but when you're using a dish machine, hard water can make it difficult to get the, uh, to get a, a good beer clean glass. You can get mineral deposits on your glassware fairly easily. So that's where I see hard water having uh, the most negative effects um, would be in a bar or restaurant using a, a dedicated dish machine. Um, in my brewery, we are having a problem with tall stem Pilsner glasses uh, using a lucre side pour and and almost always have nucleation. Uh, any advice? So I would make sure that uh, make sure you're using the right detergent. Make sure that you have a brush that is long and thin enough that can reach all the way to the bottom of that glass, where you can really scrub the inside of the glass in there. And if you're using that oil-free detergent and hot water with a brush that can reach all the way in there, you should be able to scrub the inside fairly well and remove any type of deposits that are in there. Because that can be really tough with the uh, tall, thin glasses. Uh, you know, the, the standard brush is probably about maybe six or seven inches tall, but if you've got a glass that's, you know, nine or 10 inches tall, then you're not, that standard brush isn't gonna fit to the bottom. So you need to find some specialized brush. Um, any hints on getting rid of lipstick marks? So this is a uh, this is a really good question. Um, the it's it's the ubiquitous lipstick mark that survives the dish machine, survives the uh, hand washing. Um, the best thing to do is to keep an eye out for it before you wash the glass and to wipe it off as well as you can, and then make sure that you're 
paying attention, special attention to that portion of the glass when you're washing it on the brushes. Um, that's, that's the best advice I could get. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a pain, I know, uh, but that is, that's the best way is just keep an eye out for it and address it before you wash your glassware. Um, seeing, uh, any difference for a stout like Guinness, uh, glassware cleaning regimen should be the same regardless of what kind of beer you have. Um, let's see. Any advice on how to deal with dirty glassware at a bar as a consumer? So I have lots of experience in this type of thing. Uh, in my former job years ago, I used to go to bars and restaurants and look for issues <laughs> with the beer that uh, from the brewery I worked at. And uh, so I came across this a lot. And, you know, a lot of this is really just uh, kind of diplomatic skills, uh, I would say. Uh you know, if it's somebody you know, it's a lot easier to say something to them about it. Um, if it's somebody you don't know, it could be difficult. It's it's hard, it, and it can be awkward. And sometimes you might be saying something to the wrong person. So if you are, you know, if, if the server comes over to your table and the glass is dirty, you can let them know, uh, but suggesting changes to the waiter maybe isn't going to have any effect because they don't have any say, you know what I mean? So uh, sometimes in order to really address the problem appropriately, you would need to talk to a manager, but that's a whole other thing. So if uh, it's uh, unless you really are in a position to, you know, where you know the person or uh, it can be kind of an awkward situation. So it's best to be diplomatic uh, most of the time, if I get a, a glass uh, that is not totally beer clean and I got bubbles on the inside, uh, a lot of times I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drink the beer. Sometimes if it's if it's really bad, I'll send it back and I'll just say I'm sorry, but this glass really isn't very clean, and ask for another one. Um, as far as giving advice to them, that's a whole other story, and so uh, that's. Uh, uh, you're gonna have to do that on a case by case basis, uh, but I would say that uh, for you cicerones out there uh, who who know a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, uh, we try and carry that cicerone title with some modesty as well, and to not be too upfront with people, uh, and to uh, try and be very diplomatic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's probably the best advice I can give you there. Um, a dirty glass can kill the appearance of a beer, but how can it affect the flavor? That's a great question. Um, so you saw how the head completely died on this glass. Um, so that dirty, the, whatever film was in there killed the head right away. Foam is a big part of being of uh, of appreciating beer. So it looks great, but it also in the lattice work of those bubbles, it's trapping volatile aromas. So there's aromas coming off the beer through the carbonation, but think of those millions of little bubbles as millions of little packets of volatile aromas that you want to enjoy. And as they pop, you're getting those little aromas. So it's this like slow release of volatile aromas. And, and it lasts for quite a while. And the longer that lasts, the more it's gonna preserve some of those volatile aromas, many of which just kind of go away after a while. So in that sense, preserving the head on the beer uh, is gonna go a long way to uh, preserving the aroma and flavor of the beer. Okay, um, I think that is about all the questions we've got. Um, I uh, I appreciate this ter this uh, 
terms of endearment saying in the chat here, uh, Cicerone is a guide, not a god. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good one. Uh, so uh, thank you all for uh, for being here. Thank you all for putting up with me and my technical difficulties at the front end. Uh, while you are here, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom um, and, you know, check in with us regularly. We've got more great content in the pipeline. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff at the Cicerone uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so the CBS prep talks that I did last year, we've got tasting together series with master sister and Pat Fahey and a bunch of other really great stuff, great resources for you. So, uh, uh, click that subscribe button and come back and visit us. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, everybody.